Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good morning, good afternoon to a few out there. It is the Earthmaster back at it on this Saturday. The weekend is upon us. It is uh, July 15th, 2023, about 11.46 a.m. here, California time. And uh, real quick, the uh, member drawing is being held today at 2 o'clock my time. So 4 o'clock Central, 5 o'clock Eastern time for our member drawing, giving away some prizes. Make sure you jump in on the member board. Uh, latest earthquake activity shows a 2.0 way up into the Alaska region. That's going to be outside the Brooks Range here, as mentioned on this map here. Zero kilometers deep, apparently. Looking at the overnight picture here, uh, still looking awfully quiet across areas around the Western Pacific. We did notice uh, an earthquake activity down into New Zealand here within the last hour or so. Looks like a, a four-pointer coming into the North Island area. I do want to go double check that real quick and see what's going on through the GeoNet servers. Looks like that uh, was downgraded to a 4.0. Uh, their North Island, New Zealand area. Uh, I'm sure that was felt uh, over a broad area. It looks like, well, at least a few folks did report feeling that earthquake across the uh, region, including down to the Wellington area. Uh, let's check out the earthquake drums here for that uh, earthquake. Let's see what we got going on. Should show up pretty nicely. If it is indeed a four-pointer, and it kind of looks like it is. These are all the seismograph stations here showing that uh, sequence of uh, that magnitude. It's going to be, uh, looks like this one right here down on the bottom for a four-pointer. Showed up pretty nicely there across the areas of the North Island region. So we'll continue to watch New Zealand pretty closely. Uh, I do st still think that this is uh, in for some adjustment here soon. We've seen a lot of activity north and south of the New Zealand area with only very minimal movement across this plate boundary. And of course, New Zealand sits uh, in between the two plate boundary or between the one plate boundary here, kind of splits it in half, South Island, North Island here, at least a portion of the South Island. Uh, so just keeping that area in mind. Uh, we really haven't seen too much uptick here across the Western Pacific overnight. We did catch a 4.5 up here into the uh looks like the curl kamachaka trench or this bend area here where the aleutian trench and the uh the curl kamachaka meet that earthquake uh, not a big one but still a little bit of activity kicking up here nothing showing up from the usgs map though uh, across the west coast watching some activity out in idaho looks like they've had a, a couple smaller quakes there following last night's event that was a, a four point uh, originally a 4.3 got downgraded there slightly to 4.2 near Lima, Lima, Montana. And again, uh, some aftershock activity occurring. Uh, I do want to see if there's been any adjustment here to Yellowstone. A lot of times we'll see some uh, activity there in Idaho stir up Yellowstone. Um, there is the four pointer from last night. Some of the smaller aftershock activity at a distance. Now, local seismic activity is going to look something like this. This is going to be very thin lines, um, depending on the magnitude. But either way, it should show a sharp signal. Something like this is a distant earthquake. Um, and these here as well. Even though that four-pointer was in Idaho, that will make a little bit of noise across the seismograph stations here all across the region. So it did. But it did stir up. looks like a little bit of seismic activity here across this area around the Madison Creek area of Yellowstone. Just a couple small earthquakes. Those are all probably well below 2.0. But again, we'll watch that uh, uh, for some further movement potentially here throughout the day. Um, let's go back here to California and see what we have going on. Bay Area, San Francisco, awfully quiet, awfully quiet. Um, up north here into the Clear Lake Volcanic Field. Things ongoing as um, expected around the Cobb Mountain area. It's Calpine hydrothermal operations out there in full swing. Uh, Nevada area seen some minor small microquake activity down here along the San Andreas Fault, the creeping segment, a couple smaller quakes as well. Um, but aside from that, if you notice here, these, this is not very active across California currently. Nothing going on for 2.5 and above. One earthquake there from yesterday, way here in the Gulf of California. But, uh, you know, it's we're at a phase right now, looking at this uh, the global movement um, at a standstill, just kind of like a temporary pause. Uh, and that's a little concerning because that could be pointing to something big about ready to brew out here. When it gets quiet, 
that's the time to uh, take notice. And that's what's going on here worldwide for now. Um, go ahead and check out the Puerto Rico area, see if we got any further movement out here. We are still seeing some odd earthquake activity outside the Puerto Rico trench. Now, that's a 4.1 earlier this morning. And it's common now to see earthquake activity here across the, the uh, Puerto Rico region down south here. There's a couple different troughs and trenches kind of putting a squeeze here on this land. Uh, it's almost always swarming here across the, the uh, southwestern edge of Puerto Rico. But to see earthquake activity away from the plate boundary where stress is stress tends to build here across the subduction zone also includes areas down south here in the uh, Dominica area. All this area, uh, a major hazard zone for some big earthquakes. And what we've seen here last week uh, with uh, that six pointer and some other smaller, uh, not microquakes, but moderate quakes, including the one today, still leads me to believe that this is pointing to something bigger uh, about ready to brew here around the Puerto Rico trench. It's off of the plate boundary. Uh, it's kind of uh, migrating far as the, uh, you know, the, the buildup of momentum of stress goes when we see that off of the plate boundary that's a good sign of increasing strain or in this case it has been increasing for quite a while around this area so uh, i still think that we're uh could could see something a little bit bigger within this region we'll continue to watch that area that's about the only main region that is of concern today uh, the middle america trench over here off the coast of mexico still seeing some activity of course we did have that uh uh, that earthquake a couple days ago there in that region, that's going to be that 6.3 back on, well, yesterday, but it's been over, uh, it's been over the 24 hour threshold. So it's common to see earthquake activity, aftershock movement there across the middle America trench. Uh, South America area looks like some twos and threes, but this is all generally uh, microquake activity and very common across a major plate boundary such as the uh, Peru Chile trench. The Atlantic, pretty quiet. There's not a whole lot going on out there across the Atlantic Ocean for now. The the uh, looks like a little bit of movement there around the uh, Azores area. That's going to be this region right here. A couple smaller microquake activity there, events going on. Not a whole lot, but, you know, looking at this image, this is a quiet, quiet day. Just be on guard. Um, if I were to say or had to pick a, pick a region to watch... Um, the Western Pacific out here has been awfully quiet and that's abnormally, um, below background levels right here. I mean, most of the time we're always seeing some type of activity here across the region. Um, twos and threes. Yes, that's common. Uh, but we're talking about here around the Mariana Trench through Solomon Islands, Papua New Guinea. Uh, we'll continue to watch that. It, it's possible it's possible could stir up uh, some activity here across the New Zealand area. Like, like we're seeing uh, it could get larger. So just a heads up again, if you're in New Zealand region, I think that was the, uh, only one that we've seen overnight. Let me go back here to the all magnitudes, smaller quake activity, very common across a plate boundary, right? That's not anything new, uh, not anything to worry about. I'm not seeing any major swarms. There's a 2.5 South Island. Uh, but we'll definitely keep an eye here for some movement, uh, across the New Zealand area looks like that uh looks like that four pointer is um 15 kilometers deep surface levels it looks like across the uh across north island area so we'll just watch this see how this plays out today i kind of like watching these little quiet spells to see what's coming you know you, you gotta you gotta think about the last uh, we can go the last 30 days, 4.5 and above, and look at areas that have been awfully quiet. Look at New Zealand right there. We have seen a lot more earthquake activity here across this area of the South Pacific Ocean, around the Australia and the Antarctica Plate. This has been moving quite a bit. Movement up here, a lot of movement. Look what's in between here. This is the plate boundary, New Zealand. And this should move. Definitely, uh, uh, this is, you know, if I were to mark an X on the map here, for some potential large-scale movement. There would be two places that I'm concerned. New Zealand, I think being the top one right now, and the Kurokamachaka Trench up here. This is a major player producing some large earthquakes. 
Uh, high accumulated slip rate up here, at least 83 mm per year, a little bit larger in certain areas, but the average for that region. And we haven't really seen any major earthquake activity across the Kuril Kamachaka. It's, that is definitely primed, I believe. And of course the West Coast, right? Seems like California is fused together almost. Uh, but we do see earthquake activity, just not, you know, this is the last 30 days, 2.5 and above. Uh, 4.5, I think we only had that one off the coast here yesterday. That's a Blanco fracture zone. But California is an odd one. With the general momentum of the plates out here, um, you know, there's... It's a major subduction zone up here, the uh, Cascadia, and also the... Uh, uh, transform fault here down across the uh, North American Pacific plate, but there's no major subduction zones down here off into the California area uh, unless you get into Northern California into the Pacific Northwest, but that's why we don't see as much earthquake activity here across this region compared to areas uh, west here. It's just also the general stress here. If you look at the arrows, all these arrows point towards the Northwest and that is that force out here is all reinforced by the Eurasia plate, the North American plate, all pointing towards this area. That's why we see so much earthquake activity within these regions. They're all just clustering up here. And that would be the case too, say if the Pacific plate was heading instead of Northwest towards the East, it would be massive amount of earthquake activity. Very typical of what we would see over here. But uh, due to the general, you know, these arrows here, notice the kind of clockwise, rotation here of the North American plate. Uh, there's stress here, obviously, building stress, but nothing like what we see, um, you know, every day, every year throughout this area where the uh, high accumulated slip rate is and that just that general plate movement. It's super high over here. And right now it's super quiet. So we'll continue to watch that area, folks, for some, uh, some movement. Uh, solar ham. What's going on out here in the space weather world? It looks like we did see some M-flare activity peeking up last night. Couple, couple rabbit ears here peeking up into the M-flare category. M2.8 looks like. Uh, let's see where those are coming from. It looks like 3363 and 3372. So let's go check it out. 3363. And 3372. So this one right here, remember this spot? That is the one that had that massive large core over the last week here that's been traveling, you know, obviously here towards the uh, western limb of the sun. Mentioned last night that it was growing in complexity. Looks like that did peak out a little M flaring. It still looks like it's growing a new um, <clears throat> attackers might be trying to steal your information from SDO. What? Now that's a little odd. That's a little odd. Definitely odd. I've never seen that there with the NASA, NASA site. Unless they got... Uh, I don't know. I'm going to wait a little bit before I click on those. I wanted to see the most latest imagery, but I'm kind of uh, kind of scared to be uh, clicking on that right now. It's a little odd. Uh, but either way, looking at this imagery, we'll continue to watch 3363. 3372 also produced an M-flare that's growing in size and a couple newer sunspots here on the western limb, or eastern limb of the sun, excuse me. We'll definitely watch that. Uh, no major space weather events as far as the auroras go for now. We'll check back on this a little bit later after I do some little, little security uh, updating. Storm Prediction Center here for the uh, weather forecast. It looks like a slight risk here across areas of western Texas and into New, um, New Mexico. 2% tornado probability out there. And it uh, looks like the main thing going to be some damaging wind and some hail. Large hail. That's the potential out there uh, today. I wish we had some of that uh, thunderstorm activity here along the west coast because we're underneath a heat warning. Excessive heat warning still. Um, today is supposed to be hotter than yesterday. Tomorrow, hotter than today. Now, looking at this map here, uh, these are current temperatures across the region. 100 in Chico, 104. These are current. These haven't even topped out yet. We are expecting, uh, I believe, above 110 today here in the area. 113 in Willows, 113 in Redding. Um, and it's... See, 
there's a mix notice these little arrows here pointing around all over the place right showing a little south a little east a little north you know this is this is your wind patterns here and we're we're dealing with a little bit of humidity out here right now like i'm looking on my weather station my temperature shows 96.8 uh, with 42% humidity and a 69 degree dew point, making it feel like 103 degrees. And that was like that yesterday. If it's hotter today, that means that the heat index is going to be even higher around here. And uh, I think it's got to do with all the irrigation, the uh, rice fields being full out here. Uh, because it's not like in the years past where we, we'd have drier, hotter days. It's more of a muggy uh, day. In fact, uh, when I walked out this morning, my, my glasses fogged up and it normally doesn't happen out here in the summertime because there's not a whole lot of moisture in the air. But for now, uh, there is, at least in some areas. And I think it has to do with, you know, obviously the uh, fields and um, no dominant north wind out here that would create a drying condition. And it's just, it's going to get hot either way. It doesn't matter if it's a feels like temperature or real you know the real air temperature 116 in willows tomorrow that's going to be our hotter day 113 around willows or uh chico 113 in redding the coast is a spot to be look at that 60s lower 60s up and down the coast sacramento is going to be hot but not as hot as up here in the northern end of the sacramento valley notice that influx here of the delta breeze but that's going to add humidity um and i think tomorrow is going to be one of the uh uglier days in terms of that humidity notice that south breeze trying to funnel up here into the valley and the trend here the trend does not look good far as any changes go we're talking about um hot temperatures at least all the way through june notice that high pressure parked right over the west coast in california that uh, allowing for some heat to build as I put this into motion here, there's no real change. There's no relief whatsoever for the West Coast. Pacific Northwest gets a little bit of a cool down from a sliding low pressure system here, trying to make its way down, but the high pressure kind of uh, scoots it on by without even affecting California, and it just builds back in. And that is a bad pattern there for heat. We are going to cook uh, this month and probably into August as well, unfortunately. I knew it was coming. Uh, we definitely started out kind of nice uh, here in California, first part of the summer. Uh, even spring was pretty nice as well, but uh, we're paying for it right now. Definitely going to be cooking. All right, um, I'm going to jump off here. By the way, guys, the drawing is going to be held in two hours at 2 o'clock my time, 4 o'clock Central, 5 Eastern time. Uh, make sure you become a member to be entered into the drawing today. We'll be going live with Missy Mimi's from the comfort of our couch. I'm not going to do it outside. Just a little bit too hot uh, to do that today outside. Um, I got 60 degrees here inside the uh, computer room right now. I, I, I like it cold. Definitely like it cold. I prefer that over the, uh, the horde conditions outside. It's supposed to be a what, 100... 110, 111? Yeah. I'll stay in here where it's much cooler. All right, guys. See you back here at 2 o'clock. We'll be going live on a separate live stream. Not the Earthquake Live 3D stream, but a separate live stream here um, in a couple hours. We'll see you guys back here then. Take care.